The following interview was conducted with Adam Klein, president of Purdue Student Government 2009-2010 for the Pre-University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, March the 22nd, 2010, Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Good morning, Adam, and thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and grade school? Sure. Uh, I grew up in state. I was actually two hours east of here in a small town called Hartford City, Indiana. Uh, it's a population of about 6,000 people, and I graduated with about 175. So uh, just a small country farm town. Grew up on a farm. Um, my what kind of farm did you, did you have? Uh, my father, he... Uh, he, our family farms, uh, row crops, corn and soybeans and wheat. Predominantly, we have a couple cattle on the farm just for our own freezer beef. But uh, grew up ever since I could reach the pedals, driving the tractors with dad, helping pick up rocks out of the fields. And uh, I think that we had a really tight knit family because of that. Everybody depended on one another for the farm success. And and I'm really fortunate and honored to be able to say that I came off of a farm because I think that. Um, it's what's contributed to, you know, um, I think some of the success here at Purdue, that, that hard work ethic that was instilled from an early age. So I grew up in a small town, and uh, some you people... Any, you any brothers and sisters? Yes, I've got one sister, Kayla Klein. Um, she's actually, she lives here at Purdue as well. She is a junior here, and she lives one block away, so it's a small world. But uh, she also dates my old roommate, so I see her quite frequently. But yeah, she is a junior here, majoring. She's in the College of Ag as well, and uh, she's majoring in agri business. Okay, let's talk a little about high school. Tell us a little about some of your activities and all that good stuff. Yeah, like I said, it was a smaller high school, about a 175 in my graduating class. Um, I actually wasn't in student government in high school. I ran cross country and track. Also played baseball. I was very active in sports and enjoyed that thoroughly. Did you go to any state meets at all? Yeah, actually we went to state junior and senior year in cross country, and that was a great time. Um, we had a really tight-knit group of guys who ran together every day during the summer, and it paid off the hard work. You know, you can't really cheat in cross country with, with your – there. it's not as much talent as it's just a, a lot of hard work. So um, because we had everybody to lean on, it was nicer and easier to go out every day and run with somebody than by yourself. So ran cross, cross country, finished – I believe 10th or 11th at state and 14th at state, but it's not class and we were a small school, so uh, we were pretty happy with those results. And um, also was involved in key club, some a Spanish club, National Junior Honor Society, things like that. Um, kept you busy, but also 4-H outside of high school. I was that was, you about that. That yeah. was an extracurricular activity we did. I, uh, I showed cattle and that was fun as well. It gives you a sense of ownership over something and a little bit of responsibility, take care of your own project, and, and that, was, uh, that was a really neat experience as well. Yeah, good. When uh, did you decide, did you thought about coming to Purdue, or, is, or were there other schools that you were thinking about? Or yeah, it, come up? It, was a, it was a really hard decision, believe it or not. My dad was a graduate of Purdue. Um, my mother went to Ball State. However, I, uh, I wanted to run in college, and I looked at some other Division I schools who actually had a little bit more attractive offers on the table for scholarship assistance. But when I visited with Purdue, I just fell in love with it. And when you get down to the nuts and bolts of things, you go to school for the academics. And I really liked the academic curricula they had here and the personnel here. I thought that, you know, there was a risk of being a 1 in, a, one in 40,000, just another number. But when you came here, the faculty that I had met made it feel so small, made the university just more homey. And that was that along with the opportunity to be on a 40,000 person campus, so much bigger than my hometown. It presented a lot of opportunity and that's when I made my decision after the campus visit. Good, okay. Where did you live when you first, now let's talk about uh, your major and your extracurricular activities and then we'll move into the student government sure. this year. Sure. Uh, but your major and some of the other activities that you were involved in. Sure, I'm a major in agricultural economics, and I thought when I came from the farm that I was going to do my four-year degree and just move straight back to the farm. Um, things have since changed a little bit. I think that you know the farm's still right there close to the heart, but maybe it might not be quite as a direct path back. Um, I'm also involved in Alpha Gamma Rho, which is an agricultural fraternity. I joined that because... I think that the way the agriculture is going, it'd be nice to know a lot of other young farmers in the state, and 
and also I was looking for a place to live and the guys seemed a lot more like me um, which was nice so I ended up joining Alpha Gamma Rho and that's something that I, I have not regretted one day and I am also within Purdue Foundation Student Board which is a student organization that caters to President's Council here at Purdue um, we do a lot of the programming a lot of the tailgates and ballroom events and then dedications and and other things that it's nice to interface with some of Purdue's uh, past alumni and then learn learn from their stories just to get it get to interact and show our gratitude because it's their gifts to continue to keep Purdue developing so that's another really neat organization that I've had the, the honor of being involved with good tell us about the how you decided to run for student government and then talk a little bit about the challenges initiatives and programs and things that sure initiated. sure um, well when's the, ter the term runs from I'm thinking of the researchers that term of offices uh, sure. Well, the entire school year? Actually, yeah, the day after spring break, which is today, uh, campaigning starts. And you have one week of campaigning, and then the next week there's three days where students are able to vote. After votes are tallied and the 72-hour period passes where there's been no grievances filed and everything's final, the vote total has been counted, um, they make the announcement the week following transitions made. So I'm really close to the end of everything here. Um, I started becoming involved with Purdue Student Government because I had a lot of time on my hands when I wasn't running quite as much anymore. Um, I ran here this first semester and decided, you know, um, there's some, some hardships that wasn't quite for me. Uh, however, I had a lot more time on my hands when I wasn't running 100 miles a week. So um, became involved with Purdue Student Government just out of the flute call out. And um, I had a really good mentor here as well who was a junior when I was a freshman. His name was Shane Hageman. And he's up from Remington, Indiana, but he lived in Alpha Gamma Rho with me and was a, told me a lot of great advice. And so he kind of got me started on the right track. Um, that next summer, I went out to Washington, D.C. and worked for Senator Luger. And that's where my love for policymaking and seeing the, the power of what Tell effective us the, policy. What, what was that? What was all about? Tell us about that. That's great. Sure, sure. I went out to, to intern for Senator Luger in Washington, D.C., worked in the Hart Senate building with, in his office. Um, and like I said, that's really where my love for policy making came to fruition. He, he was such a great man. He always made time to stop and eat with the interns who worked within the office. And he was one of the very few senators. And, you know, at, at this time, he's a senior senator. He doesn't need to be spending as much time with the interns or even showing them any gratitude at all, but he did. He ate lunch with us at least once a week, and when he ate lunch with us, he sat there for at least an hour, hour and a half each time just answering any questions. Most of the time, he only had this little bowl of soup, so the whole time he was, he was talking and answering questions, and he didn't answer questions like who was his favorite senator to sit with when they were passing legislation or, or sitting through, you know, long bills, and, and that was neat. He took us to his private office and let the whole group sit there and, and, and see right within the Capitol building. Only the most senior senators get the buildings within the Capitol. He had a treadmill in there, a little fold-out futon, and that was just really cool. All the perks that go along, right? Yeah, yeah, that was nice because when he, they're doing filibusters, he needs to be closed whenever things come to a vote or when things end or when he needs to be on the floor. You learned a lot about the processes, but you also learned about why you want to be a representative. And, and he really instilled in us the reason why you should want to serve the people and just learning from him was probably the experience that sparked interest to come back here and try to help represent the students. Purdue is a great great campus and a lot of the fac faculty are very receptive to student concerns which has been the um, if there's a student issue they're more than willing to meet with you about it and then also take the next step of trying to initiate uh, improvements that you might propose. Right. So. There's good it, rapport. It's been a really good relationship that we've built. So, you know, student government, it's been a great fulfilling experience. You've learned, it's, I've got my value out of my tuition money because you've not only learned the things inside the, uh, inside the classroom, but you also learn the things outside the classroom that most students don't get. I mean, this is a 1 in 40,000 oppor student opportu opportunity, and uh, just being able to sit on you know, vice presidential interviews, going and seeing you know, the provost search committee meetings, going and being a part of that thing. After you leave Purdue, that's still going to be here. Those changes are still going to be something you implement. Um, the COREC, which has been a, a student initiative from the ground up, you know, that's going to be a groundbreaking issue. That's a $98 million proposal. 
Um, that's just one of the things that we are really proud of that students have been able to get behind and faculty members and administration here have, have supported as well. And that good relationship is kind of why the, I'm so proud of Purdue's progress to move forward even in hard times like we're in right now. It's a good it's a good experience. Uh, you were on the search committee for the you've been on several search committees, haven't yes. you? Yes. Right. Whether do they pick other members from the student government as well? Yes, they do. They do. Um, actually, I was in the initial phases of the provost search committee, and that had conflicting times with another search committee that I was already on. So the vice president took over the provost search committee this uh, this round. But I'm doing the vice presidential search committee for the new um, student affairs vice president, okay. um, Tom Robinson's position. And it's been really interesting to hear from the candidates, their perspectives and how diverse they are and what each different person can bring to the table. And it's different than just an undergraduate employer interview because these people are highly polished and it's hard to kind of sometimes tell what the differences great, between great somebody. experience for you. Exactly. It's been great. And it's been an honor as well because you want the best for the students and you want to leave the best behind for the students. So I guess that's that's been one of the most fulfilling things even more than just trying to fulfill our campaign promises which we've done a pretty good part a pretty good job of we've tried to make sure that any promises we gave to the students we fulfilled but maybe the most important is making sure that the the right people get hired for the job and doing the best you can for the students every day right exactly and they come from uh, do you uh, interact with them when they come on campus the candidates as well right now yeah the right. when they when they come right right now we, we reviewed uh, their CVs their resumes and why they want to come back to Purdue that was the first step and from that we picked a pool of telephone interviews which were a half hour piece and you do a telephone conference and you ask them the same questions and and from that pool you narrow it down even farther they don't get to campus yet but they get to come to our airport and we'll meet them in the airport and get a face-to-face -face interaction where we ask any questions that we feel necessary um, follow-ups or questions that we might have had from the standardized questions that we couldn't exactly ask them once we wanted and then from that pool we'll narrow down to two or three um, that will finally you know interact with students on campus see the buildings that they'd be operating from seeing the personnel they'd be operating with and uh, hopefully we'll have a decision made by by summertime, yeah. it'd be nice. When, after the election is over, I'm thinking of this for the research, after the election is over, do you, will you be out of office or do you continue on until the end of the school year? How does I that work? Will, it's a soft transition. Okay. Uh, it depends from candidate to candidate. I don't know that there's a certain day that you, just, you say just, that I'm out of the office now. It, it, <laughs> with a one-year term, it's very hard to have a learning curve, to, to adjust to that kind of learning curve because there's a lot of things you don't know about. That's where a transition documents... something might documents, come on in the summers or it's, it's continuing on before you came on board. That's exactly right. I guess the old president serves kind of as a mentor until the new one has their feet okay. underneath them. And that's nice because it is very hard. It, it, it'd be nicer to have a two-year term, but at the same time it would really, really hurt your chances of getting a diploma on time because sometimes you're putting 40 to 60 hours a week sure. into preparing People don't preparing realize the work, the work that's involved with that and because you have, a, you have weekly meetings too. Uh, yeah, weekly meetings, uh, not only within student government we weekly, but also weekly meetings with uh, administrators. Um, the dean of students and I meet every other week. Dr. Robinson and myself meet every other week. Pablo and myself meet every week. Um, and that's just to name a few, you know, every vice president likes to meet with the student sure, government right. to remain, you know, uh, very clear and transparent with what they're doing. conversation flowing and keep the interaction. Exactly. Really key. Exactly. Right. right. Um, how about leadership, your thoughts on a leader's role in, in academic as well as the professional world? Sure. Um, well, I guess to be a leader you need to have somebody around you to kind of, to lead with. Um, and I, I say that in the, in the terms of I've always thought of it as you're only as good as the team around you. So the first element of anything is getting the right people on the bus, getting the right team around you, the people that you can trust, and then and get it with, and work with. Exactly, working with them. You don't need to be in front of them. In fact, you should probably be behind them. Um, to, I learned it from the farm as well because we've finally gotten to the stage where we're a little bit too big to, to micromanage everything. So you get the right people who have the gifts in the right areas and you let them flow with it because they're probably better in that area than you are. That's why you, um, pick, that's why you that's delegate why you, it. It's exactly right. So working closely with the team and keeping that team atmosphere and the ambiance right there um, and giving people a vested interest is I think the key to, to leadership. Um, I would have not gotten anything done this year if it wouldn't have been for the stellar team that we built around us. And it's 
it's never about the it shouldn't ever be about the leader and if, if it, that's your motives behind leadership then you shouldn't be in that position in the first place you want to be there because you're all there to help the students and um, you know, it's been a great experience because we have had the right people on the team this year we've gotten a lot done for the students and uh, I couldn't be happier. Some, and you set some goals and you have to kind of follow those too as well and mm -hmm. some of the things that, that and you said earlier the campaign promises you want to stick with those and, and these are the things that that's why I got elected that's what people do yeah, well, the first step is getting the people, you know, the right people around you. The next is just setting those goals and making sure that you've got deadlines and steps and a, a foreseeable, feasible plan. Um, we actually brought a new position on this year. Uh, it's Executive Director of Strategic Planning and Assessment. It's a really long title, but essentially what she does, and this was a perfect fit for this girl. We didn't have it before, but because we had this girl, we figured her name is Jamie Steiner, and she's actually one of the vice presidential candidates this year. But she worked out in Congress for a while. She's also worked for C-SPAN as an archiver. Uh, but mostly what she, she does, her job entails her to create proposals for whenever we walk into a meeting that we've got the research data, we've got steps for the implementable plan, making sure that it is something that fe is feasible and of value to the students. So when we walk into these meetings and the administrators see that we, it's not just some pipe dream that we've dreamt up, that we've actually put work behind it, they're a lot more willing to work with us. And that key, that role has been so key this year in, in helping all of our success. And we've got to attribute her to a lot of the success that the, the administration's had. And, you pick, and also you can look back and you pick somebody who really you felt had the capabilities to do this and to fulfill the new position with it's, somebody new on board. It's what she enjoys, too, creating those kind of proposals. You know, that's some, not something that I'm a huge fan of, but she loves it. So <laughs> you give it to her, you let her run with it. She submits it to other people to review, usually either myself or the vice president or another cabinet member. Um, we tweak it a little bit if it needs a little bit of tweaking, but, you know, she does such a good job, too. It doesn't need a lot. So... Um, we submit that to the administrators if they see something they don't like or if they see something they'd like to strike or add sure. then uh, we do that but going into those rooms makes all the difference if you've got a proposal in hand That's as right, well exactly right now let's talk a little bit about that I gave you the things that president's form do you have any comments on some of those things that uh, Keith talked about leadership and things they're kind of thought-provoking I thought and I, I happened to be at the meeting and I thought mm -hmm. it kind of and I it, as, a, as a side I was very fortunate to be able to interview uh, Keith Croc. Have you, have you met him? Yes, I've met okay. him on several occasions. And okay. Chairman Croc, he is just one of the most inspiring men around. Um, I'm kind of surprised he had five points instead of three. He usually goes with three points. Um, but, you know, he's, he's fantastic, and he's got innovative thought, and he's been very successful in the business world. But the neatest part is that he's just a great man. Um, and he, 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 he's very personable. He's very personable. And he's got a great heart, and he cares a lot for Purdue. That's where his heart's at. So he's in the right position right now. Right. Um, it's really a, we're very fortunate to have him. Um, very business minded, but also very ethically driven and motivated to push Purdue to the top in the right ways, right. the right means. And to listen to him speak, you're right. He's just fantastic, and he's got great ideas. And I'm sure that in that in the time span that you got to interview him, that you probably he probably instilled some thoughts in you that you he, probably hadn't thought about in a while. That's right. You do you and that's I think that's a good point to come away from because you a person in leadership or something of that sort. You come away and that's when I've learned things from other people I've interviewed. You come away with thoughts like mentoring how they how they perceive it or there mm -hmm. there's some other teaching techniques and you learn a lot. And, and I think interacting with people all the time you learn you have to take some should take something away from them. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And he's somebody who can really lead but lead from behind as well right. and he's a great face to have when he has to step to the plate he'll step to it but he's he's somebody who can just motivate others and get behind them and, and give them that vested interest as well right yes uh did that leadership did you go to those leadership classes did i pick the more leadership, leadership yeah. conference yeah. yes oh. yes we went to that actually one of my best friends put that on this year um they had co-chairs, Ryan Haven and Lindsey Myers. Okay. They had the best turnout in history. Good. They had great speakers there. Do you think there. there was something different they did this year, or they just got people to, to come? No, what is the size of it usually? You know, I couldn't tell you the exact okay. numbers, and I actually emailed a friend this morning. I saw them online, so I emailed them real quick, and they didn't have the exact numbers on me. I know that they beat it by 5 or 10%, which was good. Very good. Um, great speakers. President Cordova spoke. You had, I mean, you had the provost. You had a lot of really neat people who were in-house, but you also brought in out of house people who who brought things to the table that you might not think about as well and 
to have programming like that at Purdue is just a testament to the value you're getting by coming here as well. Not only do we have 890 organizations, but we've got quality programming that goes on outside of the classroom That's as key. well. Yeah, and by them, you know, by them putting on such a great conference, it's really a service to the students. It wasn't Keith, did Keith, was that, did Keith Clark speak at that as yeah, well? He gave the final commencement. Um, I think he was the keynote when we all congregated again, but he was good. He, did, he gave his three-point speech. Uh, I think that we've, we, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be interacting with him enough to hear that speech a couple times, and you look to some of your friends who've been at those same ones, and you just start numbering them off with your fingers, too, because you, he's, he's so memorable that once you hear that speech, you can remember it for almost the rest of your life, I'm sure, because um, he gave several analogies that, you know, um, when he ke- went over to Harvard Business School, he, he looked around at the people. The person to his left was the nuclear submarine commander, and the person to his right was a, a bank CFO coming back. You know, is it, Real life in scenarios, which just the students can really pick up on that. Exactly right. Exactly right. And he, he was very humble about it, too. He, was, he, he gave the analogy that he was just Keith Kroc, uh, Sigma Chi fraternity president, and he sat back down and, and, and tried to not put his head in the sand, but he looked around him and saw all that around him. And so it, it was very neat to put himself in that perspective because you think of him now as, you know, Keith Kroc, huge entrepreneur, you know, very successful businessman, but he was there in our position once too, which is neat. Which is nice. You can go with that, right, yeah. Uh, and the next stage, tell us a little, and, and uh, back to that conference, is it just one day? Yes, it's just do, one day. And do they have, I'm thinking of some of the things for the researchers, do they have it once every year or? Yes, once a year, it's early in January, actually it's late in January, okay. I, forgive me. It's later in January, anywhere from the 27th to the 31st usually. It's from about 8.30 in the morning to early afternoon. You've got two breakout sessions, I believe, but in the beginning you, you get greeted by President Cordova and it's moderated by people on mortar board. And then um, you come back and, and Keith Kroc or whoever's the keynote gives a very inspiring speech. And uh, you, you take a lot away from it because yeah. the whole day is about focusing your leadership skills and, and honing them even more. And, and that's great because I think Purdue really produces a lot of leaders out in the workforce, and it's because of these kind of programs that right, make it and happen. they're very key. They, they enhance the whole educational experience that people have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which is good. Um, the next stage. Sure. Um, well, <laughs> first... For the, for the researchers, he's looking towards commencement. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking towards commencement. Um, my term here ends in about two weeks, but I'll still be in the office as the old alumni, you know, or whatnot, giving advice where we're, we're asked. But after commencement, I'm going to go home and, and try to earn as much money this summer for the fall where I'll be attending law school. I don't know where yet. I've applied to several different places, Georgetown, Duke, um, Notre Dame, IU. I know that it's, it's, it's uh, crimson and cream, but it's, not, it's no black and gold, but it is a nice institution of higher learning in the state. And uh, I think a lot of people, when it's so close, you know, neglect to see that. But it is a good opportunity, and that might be somewhere as well, Texas, some other smaller schools as well but um, law schools is where my mind's set right now whether that takes me back to the farm I think that'd be a great possibility especially with agriculture and the direction it's going globalizing and such but the next step's definitely a, a law degree okay in closing any closing kind of something I didn't ask that you'd like to add no I, I think that you know everybody you interview probably has a different unique Purdue story but the thing is, it's all about Purdue, and all those stories are, are special because of Purdue. And One of the things that I ask the people is a Purdue tradition. Is there one that comes to mind that you'd like to share in the time that you've been here? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, the Some of the most fun ones, and I, this year it actually was the first year for both of them, was the fountain run. Um, go out when it, when it gets warm. I did this this fall. Um, because I just got back from Brazil and had an okay tan. <laughs> but, uh, no, we do a fountain run. Um, that was really fun, and that was something that, you know, you can say you're a Boilermaker because you've done a fountain run. Doing a free ride Friday with the Boilermaker special, that's great, too. Just riding around in a mascot. You can't do that in hardly any other campus, you know. And then also uh, sledding down Slater Hill. While it's a little bit dangerous and you might want to take your precautions, um, that's something that any true Boilermaker probably shouldn't miss out on because... You know, when it snows here, it snows pretty well in Indiana. And going down that huge hill, it's too irresistible. 
So that's something else that I got to do this this uh, winter that was just fantastic yeah. and fun. Right. Any anything that I that, that you want to add that I didn't ask or clo in closing? Just I think that the atmosphere here. I'm a little biased, but Purdue is a really special place, and people when they when they're here, they need to. They need to really take advantage of it if they want the true Purdue experience. You get in what you put out. Oh, wait, you put out. You get out of it what you put into it. There you go. <laughs> but uh, no, it's that's exactly that's exactly the mentality you need to take when coming to Purdue, right. and, uh, and you'll be satisfied with your experience. And you'll be looking to coming back. For the oh boilers, yeah. The boilers, oh right? yeah, big time, right. big time. Okay. We've got some really bright years ahead of us. So. That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey, Adam. thank this you very much. Okay. Thanks.